Hi, this is Pam Kinnerberg with another facepaint.com Friday tutorial. And today we're going to do something a little different. I'm going to talk about contracts. This is something that some of you already have in place and you're real happy with the way you do it. And some of you have no idea what to do. So um, that's hopefully where I'll fall in here with people who are looking for some ideas on contracts and keeping your jobs organized. So I have this sheet of paper that I use for every job and it is a way that I can just um, easily have all the information for each job on one piece of paper. I have a, sign, a signed um, signature from them. I have the quote. Everything's all on one sheet of paper and it's just um, easy to grab and go um, to my jobs um, and have that with me with all the important information I need for the day. So um, I, I just want to um, quickly say how I, um, I manage my jobs. I give them each a number every year. Um, so in 2022 now, my invoice numbers are going to start with 22. Then I'm going to have a dash. And then I'll have four zeros after that. So my first job will be 0001. Actually, that you know, it'll be 22-0001 right here. And um, the next job will be 002 and so on. So that at the end of 2022, I have an organized record of all of my jobs from the start of the year to the end of the year. So when I when a client calls me or texts me or message messages me um, and they ask for a quote and of course you know that's the first thing that we accomplish via phone or whatever way they're contacting you is to provide them with with a spoken or written um, emailed quote um, for the job and once that quote is agreed upon. That is when I send them this contract because at that point, I don't have all the specific information. I just have the main, you know, how many hours it's going to be, where it's going to be, what day it's going to be, and what the event is basically is all I know at that point. So this form, I what I'll do is I send it to them with the quote written on it, and then they are able to fill out all the information, specific information that I need. And so I'm just gonna go through and explain what I have on here. So uh, you'll just notice that my logo is here. I, I typically have my my name, my address, my phone number, and uh, you know my email and all of that information right here. I've just covered it up for this video. And then, um, so then I'll put the invoice number, um, what today's date is, not the date of the event, but the day that I'm sending them the contract. And so then I'm able to leave all of this blank, the client information. This is the part that they're going to fill out. They're going to give me their name, their address, their email, their phone. And real importantly, who do I contact the day of the event? Sometimes it's not my client. Sometimes it's somebody else and their cell number. Because as you all know, a lot of times you get to the event and there's nobody around to ask where you're supposed to be setting up. Yeah, there's no spot for you. So like, I need to call this person. Where is their phone number? And that's why I have this right here. I take the sheet with me so that I know exactly who to call. And, um, and I'm on my way. Then the next thing that they fill out is the of event information what the specific title of the event is, and you may already know this, so you could pre-fill this line out. Um, if there's a theme to the event, they can fill that out. Um, again, you've already filled out the event date, you know what that is, you know what time you're gonna start, and you know what time you're gonna end, so you can fill these out yourself. They can fill out the name, the, com the company the event is for. Oftentimes you get contact contacted by an individual um, and it's not them who the event is for. It's, you know, the company they work for, or maybe it's through a booking agency that, you know, um, has booked you. So it's nice to know exactly who the company or person is that is actually holding this event and the event location, which is different from the client address in a lot of cases. 
So they fill that out, the address, the city, the zip, so that you can easily find it on Google Maps or wherever, whatever GPS um, you have on your phone. Um, that's right there. And then I always put approximate number of faces to paint so that I kind of know how many people will be at the event and how many kids and will I be painting that day. So I kind of know how to plan my designs and what the age range will be. Many places um, really specifically want you to paint a certain age range, like um, all kids up to 12 years old, for instance, and, um, you know, many of them do not want you to paint the adults. They just want you to paint the children, which is why I have this line in there, which says, do you want me to paint children and adults or just children? And that one um, is really good to have because that way, you know, if an adult is in line that your con you can say my contract says I cannot paint adults. It's a good way out of um, painting people you're, you're not um, commissioned to paint. Then I have this line that says list of colors, special design requests, or other details if applicable. And that is if you're going to an event that, let's say a sports team, and they say, yeah, we want you to paint our logo on, on people, or we want you to only use green and yellow, you know, in all your designs. That gives them an opportunity to specify uh, what they want you to do so you're not you're not guessing then I have some buttons um, is this event indoor or is it outdoor and they can click which one it is is my shelter or tent provided again they can choose and does Piccadilly provide the tent and I have this on there because if I am not provided with a tent, then I charge for that because it takes me a lot of extra time to set up my tent and to take it down and all of that. So that's an extra charge. Um, and then this one um, that I have on here, it's parking details. I always want to be parked as close to where I'm going to be setting up as possible as I seem to have a lot to carry and I usually have to make more than one trip. So um, I have written on here, par a parking spot close to the event is preferable. So this way they can all know when I get there where I am supposed to park. And that's a biggie. We, we get there and we never know where we're supposed to park or what's closest to where we'll, we'll be setting up. So that provides me with that information. Then at the bottom, I have my fees. And um, I have very clearly on here whether I will have a chip tip jar with me or whether I will not um, have a tip jar. So this shows them right away um, what I plan to do. So it's not a surprise. Then I have my mileage, the number of miles I will be traveling times the mileage amount. And I can total it over here. I have the tent fee. I will add that onto my list of fees if I am providing the tent. And I have then the total. I add these three lines up and I put the total right here. So, and this is pre-filled out because I know this information. So this is already in there. This is, I've established this with my customer before I've sent them the contract. So this is all filled out. And then, so when this gets to them, it's a PDF that is editable. So they can just, um, I attach this to my email. I say, please fill this out and return it to me within, you know, however many days you want it back. And I say, once I get a signed contract back, your event is booked and it remains open until I get this back. And that kind of uh, makes them want to get this back in a hurry because they want to make sure that they get that date that they want. So, um, so then they can look at this, they can sign their name right here and date it and send it right back to you, um, on, on your email or however you have them send things back. So when it gets back, then I have this one page full of all the information that I need. And now there may be things that you would like to know ahead of time that you can add to this contract. Um, depending on how you work, you know, we all work differently. We all need to know different things. And so, um, you can, um, 
just make it make it all yours. But this is this is the information I need to know. Then on the back side, it's just the back side of my sheet here. Um, I just have uh, more information about the job and what my expectations are, um, different things like that, uh, the fine print basically. And then at the end, um, you know, I'm just, I just kind of want to put a nice note in there that I'm excited to come to your event, make it memorable. Thank you for inviting me and feel free to contact me with concerns just to kind of lighten it up again a little bit like, oh, I, I need this, I need this, I need this. But I am super excited. I can't wait to come.